time, I'd like to call our recess meeting from March the 17th back to order. I'd like to make a motion we recess the March 17th meeting, I mean, adjourn the March 17th meeting. Okay. So, I have a motion second. and a second to adjourn the March 17th meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. At this time, I will call tonight's meeting to order. Uh, if you will, please, I will ask um, Mayor Pro Tem Dunn if he'll lead us in the invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for being with us in our community and keeping our system safe in very trying times. Please let everybody get the care that they need. Let's just be patient. You will please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Scott, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sir? Pledge of Allegiance? To the, the flag of the United States, States of America, America. and to, to the, the republic, republic in which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. So you have the agenda in front of you. Um, are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? Mr. Mayor, I'd like for us to move uh, the consent item uh, with the appreciation for the, uh, the proclamation for Electric Linesman Day to a presentation. Okay. Any Mayor, other changes? One other change, um, consent item number six. Uh, would like to ask that that be tabled until our next meeting. Any other changes at this time? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. All right. Before we get started this evening, obviously uh, we are broadcasting this on our YouTube channel and it's going out live. So a little different than what we're, we're accustomed to because of COVID-19. But as you can see, we are spaced out. So we're trying to maintain our six foot social distancing. Um, and we'll try to do that as much as, as, much as possible this evening. Um, there, just so that the public knows, there are a couple of council members who volunteered not to be at the meeting tonight. Uh, the reasoning for that is because we, we felt like we needed to conduct this meeting, but we also wanted to adhere to the governor's executive order 121, which does not allow more than 10 people to, to assemble at one time. So therefore, uh, that's why you see us spread out and that's why you only see the number of council members that are present this evening. So please bear with us. Uh, that For those of you who are watching live on YouTube, this is new for us. Uh, we're, we're trying the best that we can. Our sound may not be the best this evening, uh, but uh, just know that probably as early as tomorrow, this meeting will be up on our website and you'll be able to, to watch it again if, if need be. With that being said, we will, we will proceed on with our, our first presentation, which is the proclamation proclaiming April the 18th, 2020 as Electric Lineman Appreciation Day in the town of Smithfield. And gentlemen, if you will bear with me, I will read the proclamation. Whereas the town of Smithfield honors the profession of linemen as this profession is steeped in personal, family, and professional tradition. And whereas electrical linemen are often first responders during storms and other catastrophic events, working to repair broken lines to make the scene safe for the citizens of the town of Smithfield, as well as other public safety workers. And whereas electrical linemen work on the town of Smithfield power lines 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, keep electricity flowing. And whereas due to the danger of their work with thousands of volts of electricity high atop power lines, these linemen put their lives at risk every day for the citizens of the town of Smithfield, with little recognition from the community regarding the danger of their work. And whereas the United States Senate in April of 2013 first recognized the efforts of electrical linemen in keeping the power on and protecting public safety, and has designated by resolution 
the celebration of a National Lineman Appreciation Day. Now therefore, I, Andy Moore, the mayor of the town of Smithfield, along with the members of the town council, do hereby proclaim April the 18th, 2020, as Electrical Lineman Appreciation Day. And we call upon the citizens of the town of Smithfield to recognize and appreciate the hard work, innovation, and dedication that these public servants make every day for our health, safety, comfort, quality of life. Gentlemen, do I have a motion to approve this proclamation? I'll make a motion we approve it. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Madam Clerk, if you will, please make sure we share this with the utility department. This evening, we, don't, we do not have any public hearings, so we will move on to citizens' comments. And we do have, uh, I think, one or two citizens that have provided a letter this evening, and I will ask uh, Councilman Scott if he'll, he'll read that letter, sir. Mayor, before I do that, I'd like to speak on the public uh, works uh, stretching of utilities with the uh, linemen. Um, I just want to make sure that we uh, normally we would have them here, but we can't tonight. We're, I, I just want to share our gratitude for the appreciation of the job that they do, not only for the linemen, but also for the staff in that office. Um, we're very fortunate in town to have our own utility, and having studied a lot about it, Smithfield is in a very good position with our infrastructure and our power rates. I think it's important for us to make a point that we have uh, greatly reduced our utility rates um, by making sure that the money is spent appropriately. We're currently um, lower than Duke Energy progress. I think that's important for our residential customers. Um, I just want to make sure that we express appreciation to not only for the linemen who we're very grateful for, but also for the, um, the staff that work in the office. Um, as you mentioned, uh, citizens' comments, uh, this is from Pam Lampy uh, and signed by Emma Gimmel. They usually attend our meetings, uh, but we encourage all of our citizens to attend. She sent this note in because they couldn't be here tonight, and I'll read it right quick. Uh, to send appreciation and gratitude for, for so many overcoming obstacles that have occurred from the results of the coronavirus pandemic, our town, city, state, country and world, we can't, with the calm but knowledge of present of the energy is chafed in the personal and the community. We just wanted to express our feelings of gratitude and appreciation to everyone, number one, for the town departments that have kept our town safe, the police, clean sanitation, fire department, and other departments working behind the scenes diligently. Number two, for the direction of the mayor, town manager, for following guidelines, keeping our community spreading coronavirus, therefore keeping us safe. Number three, for our restaurants, grocery stores, banks, and other essential businesses staying open and safe with ways that supporting the community needs. Number four, for the people of our town and community coming together to follow the guidelines and helping others by physical distancing and social interaction, keeping our devices for support and connection. Number five, the communities as a whole are, sh are, are shedding their culture, clearing their yards, and so on. So I, I'm sorry, so a double thank you for the sanitation pickup for hauling away these items since we are sheltered in place. Thank you so much. To the town council for its leadership and its time of uncertainty for so many and knowing that the council is there us in so many ways we are unaware another thanks and lastly knowing that we continue I'm sorry knowing that we we will come out of the other side of this pandemic better therefore because we have better understanding and awareness it has made us more thoughtful and aware of how fragile and yet resilient humanity is and we work as a team which is what the world is doing it makes us proud Thank you so much. Appreciation, diligence, Pam Lampy and M. Gimmel. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Scott. Okay, at this time we will move forward uh, with the consent agenda. Do we have an approval to a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So gentlemen, we have one business item this evening. 
It is S-1801 East River HUD Master Plan and Preliminary Flat Approval. This time I'll turn it over to Stephen, who I believe is calling in the applicant or the applicant's representative. Madam Clerk. Hey Donnie, um, your agenda item is is before us. Um, I'd like you to uh, speak clearly and acknowledge the fact that you were invited to this meeting in person and that you chose to attend by by phone. So one second, if you don't mind, I probably need to open yes, open the public hearing at this time. Uh, oh. Oh. Yes. All right, sir, so just want to commend the council for continuing to have the meeting tonight and just extend a lot of gratitude for bringing us to see our items tonight. We'd like to thank them uh, for, for doing so uh, and your team's work preparing for this. We're very appreciative that the town of Smithville is flexible enough to uh, continue this item forward. All right. Thank you, Reed. Um, at this time, I will turn it over to our planning director, Stephen, if you want to proceed. Sure. Presenting I, the information. Um, I don't know if you were following, um, Donnie and Reed, that the Facebook Live, if you're following it, I guess there's a delay. So it might be confusing on your end. Okay. Um, I'm going to proceed here. Um, staff is requesting review of East River uh, Master Plan Preliminary Plat. Um, this is a, a reminder of where it's at since this was before us quite some time ago, but it's off of Buffalo Road just north of Derwood Stevenson Parkway. I'm not going to go through all this, but the application number is S1801 and it's in the town of Smithfield. It's a PUD planned unit development. So as an overview, the town council approved the PUD preliminary plat on December 4th, 2018, and phase one construction is nearly complete. The developer recently submitted phase two, showing a significant change to how stormwater management is being addressed in the entire development, which is a significant change from the approved PUD preliminary plat um, requiring reapproval. Originally, an existing pond near the Noose River was going to be used for stormwater purposes, but because of DEQ regulations, the department determined that the pond could only be used for stormwater attenuation and not be used for treating stormwater for quality. As a result, a significant portion of the planned open space is now proposed to be used for a constructed wetland. Um, the final plan is supposed to substantially agree with the approved PUD master plan and preliminary plat and we believe this is a significant change um, requiring council approval. So the original narrative talked about pocket parks within the common open space. The pocket parks are to be long green strips between rows of homes. Um, they were to include paved pedestrian trails, attractive landscaping to be used for soccer, football, cornhole, horseshoes, fire pits, and cookouts. Portions of this open space is now proposed for constructed wetlands, a significant change as I stated earlier. Um, the proposed HOA trail in the HOA open space originally ran down the middle of those open spaces. With the revised plan, the trail will be located towards the rear property lines on some lots to make room for the constructed wetlands. The original plat um, was conditioned requiring the public trail in the shore court cul-de-sac to be modified such that it was independent of the sanitary pump station access way and that the greenway trail would go around the cul-de-sac rather than through it. And they have addressed those 
concerns and comments. With the approval of the original plan, the appellants also added a condition requiring the developer to incorporate overflow parking into each phase of the development. Phase one had no overflow parking, uh, but phase two and future phases are showing the overflow parking as requested. And lastly, the HOA declarations do include a prohibition on parking on the public street. Um, so this is the original master plan for the preliminary plat. You can see the long green strips running between the backs of homes. You also see the pond down by the river where the stormwater was supposed to go. In the revised, you can now see significant portions of those long green linear parks have been turned into uh, constructed wetlands shown here in blue. Um, I'll also note that the blue dashed lines are HOA trails for the trails for the for the community, whereas the green trails are meant to be public trails. And the public trails are not impacted at all by this change, but the HOA trails are are moved closer to the rear property lines and some lots. And here's a detail of the portion of the development closest to the river. Again, you can see the ponds in the park and the trail going around the cul-de-sac rather than through it. And this is the portion of the development surrounding Buffalo Road. And phase two is uh, in the upper right-hand corner. This is an example from the phase two construction plans showing how that pond would be graded for, for a constructed wetland. So you can see that there would be more or less channels where water would move through and, and at other times it would overflow into probably grassier areas on the, on the sides. The planning department, um, uh, sorry, the planning board reviewed this and um, agreed with staff's recommendations, which were six conditions. And these are repeats from the original plat approval, but we deleted the ones that have been addressed. So um, I'm not gonna read through these, they're in your packet and here on the screen. But again, these are, are conditions of approval that are typical with a preliminary plat. There's nothing specific to the new master plan other than we've reduced the number of conditions since they, they've met the conditions. So with that, staff has requested the town council review the plat and make a decision whether to recommend approval um, with the conditions. Thank you, Steve. Any questions from the council? Mayor, I have a question, um, if he can hear us on the phone, Mayor. Um, does he have an idea of how many, I guess it was square feet or square acreage of green space was lost? with the adding of the water wet on it? Did you hear that question? No, we, we cannot hear them. I don't know if you could repeat Sure. The question was from uh, Council Member Travis Scott, how much of the open space has been lost to constructed wetlands? Well, I think you got to consider the overall project. I mean, we had to deal with wastewater on this site as a whole. Um, so in your code, open space, there's 15% required open space for a neighborhood like this. And our plan before had 44% open space, which far exceeded your code. And today, it has 45% open space um, as provided. Um, some of it has been moved from the back where the big pond was to these areas. Um, you can see where the channel runs. Um, I, I like the, your presentation on where the phase two constructed wetland shows that the channel does take up some of that space, um, but it's not a whole blue space like the, the master plan shows because that's more of a shade than, than actually shows um, for the constructed wetland. Um, you, 
we do not have a specific calculation for the different pods, but as an overall plan, we are exceeding the challenge code from an open space standpoint. Thank you. One other question for him. Um, did this, we spoke of rerouting the trails, the community trails and the, the subdivision trails. Did that lose any um, linear feet of trails? The question is whether any linear foot of trails have been lost with these changes. No, sir. We just re repositioned them. Any other questions? Sorry, sir. Stephen. Mayor, um, I guess my question to them would be the risk or with this being in the backyard, it's potentially wet. I don't know if they've consulted with a professional about that, but is there a risk with it not being screened or fenced if they have to put it in the backyard? The question, same question from Travis Scott is, um, if there's any safety issues with these ponds, these constructed wetlands, and the need for fencing to protect public safety? Do, 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 I do not have the documentation for that. I do not believe it, it poses a uh, uh, public safety issue. Uh, these are, this will be shallow ponding areas um, during, or during and immediately after the fall event. Uh, for the most part, throughout the year, there'll be a very small channel that will be wet. Um, again, do not believe there's any danger to public health or safety. And, and furthermore, if this is a very common technique used in areas like this, if you go to San Antonio and walk on the river walk, there are uh, devices like this all along the public right away. Uh, the river downtown of San Antonio deals with this. Storm water is going through to the river walk where these type of devices handle that type of stormwater before they go into the river walk. So um, we, you know, this is a common way to deal with stormwater in areas like this. So my question is, uh, do you have a, uh, so do, with, with, the, with the addition of the wetlands, do you have um, plans for the uh, landscaping in the wetlands? You know, what type of materials are you going to use to, um, you know, because we saw some pictures that somebody sent to us today uh, related to some examples. And the question is, is that, you know, I'm assuming you're going to have some type of, a, uh, you know, some either some, are you planting some type of uh, vegetation that will, uh, you know, assist with the, the uh, absorption of the water or, you know, just, it's not just going to be a plain ditch down there that water rails into, right? You catch all that? So you plan on there, they should be, uh, uh, let me say it this way. So they should be um, aesthetically pleasing uh, wetlands and not just uh, a weedy grow up area place. <laughs> So, uh, I didn't catch his name. I think you said Donnie. Donnie, 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 yeah. Donnie um, one of the concerns um, that I have uh, just looking at this is with the HOA, um, with maintenance, two questions. Are you guys planning to do all exterior maintenance in the subdivision? And two, who would maintain these wetlands if they got clogged up or something of that nature? Did you hear that question? Um, it is whether the is this whole subdivision exterior maintenance being conducted by the HOA 
And the second point is um, maintenance on the what what is what is the required maintenance of, of these wetlands? And who's gonna do it? And who's gonna do okay. it? So he's so I understood him to say that they are doing exterior maintenance and they would maintain this. That is correct. So who is it that's responsible for inspecting the wetlands to ensure that they're maintained properly? Actually, they will have a certified engineer inspect it every year. They're required in July to submit an inspection report to the town of Smithfield, and that inspection has. Uh, follows the BMP guideline that the state DEQ um, puts out. So the requirements are all there on the state website. And they will submit pictures showing the wetland and any deficiencies and any, any things that need to be repaired. And uh, the town ordinance requires 180 days for those repairs to be done um, if they're needed. And the town engineer then certifies, or doesn't certify, but you know, reviews that certification, make sure he's in agreement, and if so, you know, we'll follow up if repairs are needed. If not, um, the next year we'll get another report, and that's how we monitor it year to year. And then the town submits uh, a yearly report back to the DEQ about our entire stormwater program. Uh, let me ask you a question. I think this was something we had discovered before. The, uh, the, the, the question is the, the community is Part of their, no one does their own yards or stuff like this in the community. It's all part of the HOA that contracts it out to somebody. Isn't that correct? You catch that, Reed? Yes, that is, that is correct. So that would just be part of their, whoever their maintenance people, that would be part of their routine maintenance to do with the, maintain the wetland or whatever, I'm assuming. It would be similar. They, whoever they have to handle it, I have to handle it, right? I do have a question. Uh, and I know this is a, a new subdivision, so this is not an imminent problem. Uh, down the road, 10 years, uh, most some of the homes have turned over. Sometimes a homeowners association may falter or just cease to exist. Is there any provision for maintenance of it, and who will be responsible after, or in that case, if that happens? Did you follow that one? Uh, kind of, can you repeat that one? It's really about the long-term viability of the HOA. What happens if the HOA, you know, ceases to exist or is somewhat non-functioning, people aren't paying dues, um, you can't pull together a quorum of people willing to serve. We've had all those scenarios before. What, what is the fate of the uh, stormwater pond at that point? That was covered. So I think that was my concern. Um, speaking of the 
fees and the success of that, would, would they agree to allocate a certain percentage of their HOA fees so that they can manage that? I think that's what he just said. Obviously, we don't know that number, but if he'd be will, would he be willing to allocate for specifically for wetlands? And I understand that the pond was there, but it's back there. It would be less square footage of mowing. This is going to take a little more because you got more uh, area to mow, and it's going to be in people's backyard. So I think that's what he said. I think he said it's it's the maintenance is going to be subcontracted, and that would cover all the maintenance, so not just the pond, but the entire thing. So it won't be. Well, 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 I understand that, but what if there's drainage issues or something like that, or an increase you know, in the problem? Would they have a problem allocating a certain percentage of the funds for the wetland maintenance? The question was whether or not the HOA could be structured such that some of the HOA fees are dedicated towards maintenance of the pond, a certain percentage. Yeah, he's moving it, and you're adding it, but closer to the residence, which therefore it could be a problem. Did you hear that? The, pro the proximity. proximity of the stormwater devices to the home doesn't equate to addition, more additional cost than the other one. Do these not connect with pipes? They do connect with pipes. Well, there's more pipes. That's one body of water. I think there was... Uh, there's a lot of pipe to get it to the body of water down. So the he's river. disagreeing to that request. He said there's not really a difference, is what he said. Am I correct? Is that what you're saying? There's no real difference. Correct. And that, that was that, that was a massive amount of tobacco that's going to be cut. So, so I guess if I I heard your 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 comment correctly, Councilman Scott, I just want to make sure that we're that I understand it correctly. I think I heard you say that because, like, yes, we understand that this was not a provision um, in the in, as it was originally submitted, but the pond was at the back of the neighborhood, right? Now, the wetlands or the stormwater mitigation has now moved closer up to the home sites. Is that a fair statement, Stephen? I, say, I would say it is, and you agree with that, Reed? Yes. So, so I think Councilman Scott's concern there is, is that because of that, it is now moved closer to the homes, is now more visible to the homeowners, is now visible to visitors in that neighborhood. Would it be possible just to have some, some type of wording in the homeowners association agreement that says, yes, we will reserve X number of funds to maintain that. I guess the maintenance of it, how it looks aesthetically, has now become an issue. It's what I'm, what I'm understanding from Councilman Scott, right? Yeah, we well, want to make sure that it is, it is now, it's brought sort of closer to the forefront of the neighborhood, if you will, not forefront, but I mean, it's more prominent now. We just would like to make sure that there are provisions, not saying that it will not be done, right? I mean, I, I fully believe that it will be done, um, but I think that, if I'm hearing correctly, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Councilman Scott, but it sounds to me that's what's really your concern. Well, in fact, Mayor, that is my concern. He mentioned the pond in the back was bigger. Well, that's one body. you got so many linear feet to mow. This is going to require more. You're going to have vegetation planted, and it's going to be shallow. I mean, that, that's just my whole concern. I mean, obviously, they have to market these houses and sell them, but if people knew that it was safe and it was going to be maintained and that money was allocated, I think they would be more comfortable since it's going to be in their backyard now more so than it was before. Right, and I didn't, I'm not hearing there is a request that there be more funds or anything, no. whatever the appropriate amount that you would consider would go into the service that will be maintaining that pond as part of the landscaping agreement. Is there, is there a way that that type wording can be placed in the home association agreement? That, I think that's what I'm hearing.
improvements that need to be made, but at the end of the day, whatever that balance is, that covenant will cover that those homeowners have to take care of. And just for the record, we have requested that the, uh, the uh, maintenance agreement become an attachment to the HOA document so that every homeowner has a copy and understands the responsibilities that go into maintaining and reporting and maintenance. We have a question. Councilman Scott, is that yes, I address think so. your question? Yeah, yes. yes. And I just want to state through Reed and uh, his his team is definitely our effort to help them mitigate this. But these concerns come with the knowing of having HOH in the corporate limits. A lot of times it becomes a town's problem because the HOAs are a lot of times not active. That's what part of this concern comes from. If we can, you know, help ensure that that takes place because once the houses are sold, it becomes the owners, um, you know, as a group, and you know that would have a huge impact on all of them. If, that presence is already set, I think it would be beneficial to the whole community in that neighborhood specifically. Reed, did you understand that? I did not, no sir. <laughs> A lot to rephrase, but essentially, um, you know, the town is, is really happy to work with, with the developer on this. You know, the concerns really are just the, the long-term um, success of the development and the HOA and making sure that these ponds are successful well into the future. Is that a good summary? Yes. I think if the covenant, and that there's something stronger we can do than covenants that each neighborhood or each person in this neighborhood when they buy their house agrees to the covenant that that's what they're required to do. Um, I, I guess if this was such a big concern, it would be no different than them not maintaining into the new river. So, I mean, again, this is not a new problem. It's just in a different location. Different location. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say one other thing, um, and I, but this is a question. Looking at this plan, did they consider other options of like moving, like moving some houses to specifically make one big pond somewhere else? The question is, the question is, is whether you guys looked at other options for the constructed wetlands, such as moving some lots or removing some lots and having one larger constructed wetland versus using the open space uh, as currently shown. Yes, sir. I, I think we did look at a lot of different alternatives. Yeah, our, our goal was to try to stay with the original concept, um, you know, as close as, as we could. Um, I guess. I mean, maybe. I mean, we, we're not as expensive as the solution. This this is a pretty good solution um, that our environmental consultants and everybody has worked on. That that really. So, Stephen, I'm going to ask a question of you. Um, everything within this plan, that they're with the, including the changes that they have proposed, do they all fall within the guidelines of our UDO? Yes, they do. So there's nothing they're requesting that's violating the UDO at all? Nothing. I just want to point out that some of the concerns I voiced were also shared by some of the planning board that heard this as well, and I just wanted to make sure we understood their position on that. Thank you. Stephen, do you have that, uh, the, the concern? I, 
I don't have that uh, information on the planning board. Their comments at the end when they approved it, they had a, they made a statement about what their concerns were. It was essentially the same thing that we discussed tonight, wanting to make sure that there were funds to maintain the pond. And they didn't really know what we could require legally. And uh, we did talk to our town attorney a little bit about it. We talked, talked about, uh, I don't know if Bob, you wanna summarize what is possible with, with an HOA agreement. But that was their concern is, you know, is there any requirements we could have with a HOA agreement to ensure that there are funds dedicated for maintenance of that pond? This is Bob Spence. Obviously, the plan of a homeowners association, which all y'all know, is to have a monthly set of dues, a portion of which will go to maintenance items, including this pond. If you wanted additional requirements, you could ask that the homeowners association keep a certain amount of money in a sinking fund over this pond. I'm trying to get past any concerns the board has about about the excuse me about the the storm drain system as replacing the pond. So, you know, the, the Homeowners Association could keep um, a certain amount of money, maybe Donnie would have a suggestion, might be $5,000 in there in the event that there needs to be maintenance uh, and they do not have actual funds uh, in, in the Homeowners Association long term and have it designated specifically for maintenance of the wetland areas between the homes, houses. Is that what you're talking about? I was yeah. trying to give you something so that we go, Donnie and Reed, beyond this particular point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve, can, you, can I weigh in on that? Yes. I, I think that, that is an acceptable way to look at this. Um, we've done this in some of our neighborhoods where we have town homes that are like replacement reserves on roofs for you know, exterior features. Um, I think Travis likes that. Is, uh, Reed, is that, how many homeowners, is it 350 homes here? What is it? Around just out of 300. Okay. So if you were adding a, 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 you know, a dollar a month, you'd be adding about $3,600 a year, $2 a month, you'd be adding about uh, $7,200 a year. Is that what you're figuring, Reed? Travis, you might want the two dollars a month, or come up with a figure plus five thousand up front. And you have a—I call it a sinking fund. He called it a replacement. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Reed, for that explanation. I actually, I believe that kind of clears some things up, right? And and sorry for the maybe the miscommunication as from from a maintenance standpoint and you know a repair standpoint. So I think that was a very valuable clarification that was just just made. Any other questions, concerns, comments? At the pleasure of the board, without any other comments. So we're just looking for an approval with just maybe a few um, recommendations. 
since we're not in a hearing, that's what we need to do then. Yeah, we are recommending six conditions. Are they okay with those six conditions? Reed? Yeah, please say that again, please. Uh, the question is whether you're okay with the six conditions. These are the same conditions that are on the original approval but reduced in number. Yes, sir. And, and whether you'd be comfortable with an additional condition for that replacement fund for the, the stormwater. Yes, sir. I would uh, I'd be happy with a second condition on uh, replacement repair for the stormwater fund. I would just like uh, the flexibility to work with uh, town staff and the town attorney on the economics of it. Uh, because they all will be there at once. So, you know, should our Mayor, I'll, um, since we're not in the public here, we don't have to close it. I, I would like to make a motion that we approve the request with the conditions stated, and they're in our agenda packet, adding the um, repair fund, repair fund, uh, with the $5,000 that he uh, stated initially, with a $2 minimum of a dollar a month. But if y'all find it necessary working with him, we may adjust that number, increase that number. Is that reasonable? I second okay? the motion. Is that okay, Reed? Is uh, Reed, did you catch me? That's right. So, so just, just okay. So, so I've got a motion and a second on, on the floor. So this time we'll have the discussion. So, so uh, Mr. Plan and Director, if you will repeat those conditions, and the applicant can can hear. So agreement to establish a reserve fund with what a, a minimum of five thousand dollars. And then uh, a dollar, it, whatever, he, as he mentioned, it may not be necessary initially, but it may need to be more later. Whatever y'all work out, but I said a minimum of a dollar. Flexibility on a minimum of a dollar, maybe more as working with staff to determine the appropriate amount. Or a repair fund for, for the repair, repair fund. Specific. Specifically yeah. repair fund. Exactly what we Is that clear, Mr. Barber? That's good. Okay, gentlemen, I have a motion and a second to to approve uh, with the, the added condition. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, on the phone. Um, Thank you. We appreciate it. Man, I just want to make I just want to make sure the clerk got that. Um, I think the key word there is repair. Yes, definitely. definitely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. Stephen, thank you very much. Um, and again, for those that are watching on YouTube, my apologies. I know that may have been a little difficult to hear because of the call in. We were planning to have the applicants here tonight. They chose to do it via phone, which is certainly understandable. So we tried to make accommodations for the ap applicant at the last minute and did a conference call. So I'm sure it was probably a little difficult to hear all of that, but basically we, we approved the, the request. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. My apologies again, this is a little different tonight. And I was just thinking it was a, a public hearing. So I was going on into opening the public hearing. So my apologies, gentlemen, on that. So again, we will move forward uh, on the agenda. We have a couple of other items on the agenda, agenda, and the first one, the next one is council members' comments. Any other comments from the clerk? Mayor, I have a few brief comments I'd like to make. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you and the staff for your efforts in keeping social distancing. I know it's it's hard. I've even touched my face, and I realize I'm not supposed to do that. But I think our hygiene is very important. I do want to say to the citizens of Smithfield, thank you for your patience and your due diligence um, throughout this very difficult time. We understand that that's a hardship for not only for our residents, but for our businesses. And I, I can just see unity in the community. And I think it's so important that we express our thank you for that as uh, we are in trying times. I do want to share 
um, just a few brief words on the pandemic that we're in related to our town. Um, you know, our president has been on the TV giving updates daily, and I think it's very important we all continue to take this serious because it has affected the community. I have lost a personal friend because of this pandemic. A lot of people think, oh, well, maybe we're overreacting. And I don't know if we're overreacting, but I do know that we're in unprecedented times right now. I just want to say thank you. That friend of mine was one from a mission trip. He lived in Chicago, and he lost his life a few days ago. And um, it's very, it's very humbling to think of that, but to know that there is such a disease that has affected us. But the way we be strong as a community, which is what we are, we will only be better. One of the things that I wanted to point out um, or, or mention, Mayor, uh, as in citizens' comments or council members' comments, even. The, um, the budget. We're coming up in our budget uh, season. We've had already had planned meetings. We had to change that. And I know our manager and the town department heads have worked very hard to come up with you know, topics, and we talked about having them, uh, workshops, and I hope we can carry on with that. I just want to say to the citizens that they understand that our town, because of the hard work of the prior council and this council here, we are financially secure. We're not wealthy we're not poor but our reserve funds are strong and our utilities and our um, essential services we try to maintain those and keep those as cost prohibitive as low as, as possible my point is in other words we try to pass on the savings to our customers by doing that for example our trash pickup and things like that having said that moving forward I personally feel like that we're going to be in some trying times in the, financially in the future because of the impact. For example, our sales tax revenue is very important to the town, and a lot of our business has been, been affected. And generally, that runs about three months behind, the best I understand. So we won't see that until about three months. I say that to say I just want to encourage our department heads and our manager, as we're moving forward, to think about the most conservative measures that we can for our budgeting um, and, and focus on the essentials and the important things as you guys generally always have, but I just wanted to make that clear um, that I appreciate what they're doing, and I hope that we can move forward with that. Um, that's all I have, Mayor, thank you. Any other comments? I have a comment. Um, I would say I, I, uh, I, I, I was very pleased to uh, um, see on Facebook that our mayor consistently goes and visits our restaurants in the town and take, take out food, help support our town. And uh, I try to make sure that we, we go in uh, at least a couple of times a week to uh, you know go through the takeout windows and help support our restaurants. These people, I appreciate them being there and I uh, know it's difficult for them. It's a struggle for them. And, and uh, let me just say, I went to Zaxby's on Saturday night and the line was right around the building. So I don't know if they lost any business that night. Let me just tell you, <laughs> tell you that much. But the people were kind. They weren't fussing and whining and all. So I appreciate our town. Our town's got a pretty good attitude about it, I think. Uh, I think we all recognize this is something that we need to do. Uh, maybe uh, others, we're really more protecting. If you think about it, for the most part, we're protecting someone else, not ourselves. You know, because if you're in relatively good health, the odds are you're going to be okay if you do get it. But what about that person that you come in contact with that has some health issues? I certainly wouldn't want that to be an issue for me having uh, someone else uh, having a fatality because of my carelessness. So I appreciate, I appreciate the town, appreciate the thing I see people doing. I appreciate our town workers. They're still working hard. I see my, you know, my trash is picked up every time it comes around and and everything we need is being done. I appreciate the efforts of our town. We're very fortunate to live in a town that has people who care about you and care about being part of the town. And I just want to say thank you to you as the citizens and to our businesses that are uh, open to meet our needs of our, of our citizens and of the workers that are putting themselves on the line to help us. And we certainly hope that all of us are doing our part to make them safe when we go to the restaurants and get our food or we go to the, to the, to the grocery stores or wherever, the drug stores, that we need to go, that we're protecting them. So, um, but I do, I do appreciate the town doing it and uh, the efforts that we're seeing. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, I'd just like to thank everyone. Periodically when you get out, you realize that traffic is down on the street. People are taking notice of the stay-at-home order. Uh, the most important thing, I think, to continue 
good hygiene, keep your hands clean, keep your social distancing. Um, hopefully the spread is going to supposedly going to start slowing a little bit soon as a result of that. So as Dr. Barber said, uh, not everybody is as affected by this as others, so you need to look out for the people around you, try to take care of your social distancing and hand washing Not always convenient to do these things, but at this particular time it's very important. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Okay, and then we, um, to the citizens of Smithdale, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I think we're all doing well and doing the things we're supposed to, and listen to what the government issues, and um, keep a safe distance, wash your hands, and just use common sense. But it's a good time as well. To get I'm getting to know my family a little bit better because we're sitting in, in the house more and talking a little bit more and uh, enjoy that part of it. Uh, do your due diligence and hopefully this will be over in a month or so we can get back to normal. So thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So with that being said, thank you for, for all the comments. And first and foremost, I want to say thank you to the council members tonight. For, for agreeing to, to conduct this meeting as we have this evening. And to the other council members that are hopefully watching on YouTube, I want to say thank you. Um, they were on standby should something happen this evening and we did not have a quorum. We had them on speed dial and the necessary numbers would have been here so that we could have had a quorum uh, should that have been needed. So, uh, Mike, I want to thank you manager for, for helping to, to plan this this evening. Um, we've got three council members that serve on the front lines, uh, either in the EMS or, or fire department and or both. And gentlemen, I want to say personally, thank you to each and every one of you, what you do outside of these chambers to help protect us. And I'm concerned about your safety. Um, so, so please do all that you can to protect yourselves. And it's not only you guys, but I did want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you gentlemen do. Um, but it's, it's all of our town employees. Uh, it's our police officers. It's our sanitation workers. It's our utility workers. It's our town staff. Our, um, we're, we're, we're government running. I know you can have your different opinions on government, the size of government, and so forth, but when it comes down to it, in a free democracy like we have, we have to have a government. And a government has to stay in business. So I want to say thank you to, to everybody who is participating in this. Some of the things that we are doing uh, uh, from a town standpoint, obviously, situations like tonight, we're trying our best to to have a plan. We have an isolation. It's part of our isolation plan, right? So we only had a certain number of council members here. God forbid that someone were to get sick. We have others that are not here and hopefully they're practicing their social distancing and because of that isolation plan that we'll be able to continue with our government operations. We are elected officials and we're elected for the people, but we have to make the decisions that operate this town and keep it going. So one thing we're doing again is, is just like, like this evening. But another thing uh, that we've implemented here, and I want to I want to give a shout out to, to the town manager. I tried to get his picture to post it on Facebook, but he, he wouldn't allow me to do it because he's too modest. When we decided to make the decision to close town hall, we have to keep functioning, right? We have to continue to answer the needs of our citizens. And he came up with an idea to put a camera in our hallway as you come in the front door. Okay. This was, I mean, it came up with a plan and the plan was implemented and the camera was installed and functioning within one week. And I've been here and seen how it operates. And let me tell you, it's, it's fantastic. So the people can actually have the interaction with our customer service representatives without ever having 
to enter the main part of the building. They can continue to pay their credit card bills by just standing here and, and giving the teller the, the information that's needed. So it's that out of box thinking, those things that we have to do during these trying times in our lives that I want to say thank you, um, not only to the, to the town manager, but to our entire staff. I came, came by here the other day on one of our busy days our finance director, Greg Silo, was standing outside making sure people kept their social distances while they're outside waiting to come in here, providing them with forms that they may need in order to pay their bills once they got in here. I walked down the hall a little bit further, and there's Shannon, our town clerk, behind the window at the tellers, helping them because it was so busy. It is that type of teamwork that makes our town so special and makes me proud to be the mayor of the town of Smithfield. You don't get this in every town. You don't get the out of box thinking. You don't get the cooperation. You don't get the, the staff all chipping in. You certainly don't get the cooperation from all the council like we have here. And again, I just want to say thank you to you gentlemen, and I just want the citizens to know that you're in good hands. Um, some of the other things that we're doing is, I, obviously, we've, we've closed our parks, we've closed most of our buildings. Um, the fire and EM, uh, police department have protocols in place uh, that I, I will not get into, but they have protocols in place not only from answering calls, but should there be an incidence where we do have a breakout of, of this virus within town of, of town employees, please know that we have a plan in place and that you will be protected. God forbid something to happen. So, Councilman Scott alluded to the budget. Um, it, and it's one thing, I, I happened to serve on the town during those, those times when we were deprived of those funds. And those were difficult times, right? And situations like we're going through now, they do concern me. Um, and as we start going through the budget session, we'll, 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 we'll begin to start to deal with those, but we gotta start thinking about it. We gotta think about our purchases. We have to think about, hey, do we really need to spend this now? What are our sales revenue, uh, sales tax gonna look like? Is the state gonna withhold any funds? And so forth. Those are the things that we have to start considering now but as Councilman Scott alluded to and mentioned, because of the, the hard work of the council, the hard work of the staff, the hard work of the town manager, we have a fund balance now, I believe, of around 93%. Is that correct, Mr. Manager? That's correct, Mr. Manager. So we have a fund balance that's right at 93%. So we have planned and we are ready for this. Should there be an impact on the budget? But we don't know. It's unclear. But at least we have a plan in place. We have a fund balance at 93%, which is there for situations such as this. So again, to the, to the council and to the staff, I want to say thank you. So at this time, I did want to share just a few of the statistics that came out today as of 5.30 from the county. Um, we have 49 confirmed cases of COVID-19 within the county. We have 13 people that are currently hospitalized. The average age of positive cases is 54. We have three confirmed people that have died as a result of COVID-19, and I say confirmed because there was uh, some talk today of possibly a fourth person. However, that has not been confirmed as of 5.30 this afternoon. 51% of, of the cases have been female and 49% have been male. In addition, there has been an outbreak in a nursing and rehab facility in the Clayton area. 
And uh, so that's impacting several of those people in the Clayton area. But those are just some of the statistics that we have as of 5, 530 this afternoon. One of the other things that I wanted to, to speak about is that many people have asked me, we have gotten many, many calls from citizens, from business owners as to why one business is continuing to operate and how can one business do this and what are these businesses doing to protect not only their employees but, but their customers. And I will say that we, we are trying our best as, as a town to treat everyone fairly, to treat everyone per the orders of the governor, per the executive order 121, not only fairly, but we were trying to be consistent as well. Um, I did draft a letter last, or it was last week, I guess, uh, for the businesses uh, from myself and as we were going around as town staff as the police department, and let me just say, the police chief, he is personally going around to a lot of these businesses himself. And I wanna say thank you to, to the chief and to, to his, his officers, but he's able to carry this letter into the, to the businesses, asking them to, to please cooperate and to do their best to not only protect their employees, but to uh, protect the citizens. And I will say that, um, they're, doing, they're, they're beginning to do it. As, as Mayor Pro Tem said, there's, there's a lot less traffic on the roads. Um, when you start to go into some of these stores, you start to see plexiglass going up, lines on the floor, um, signs um, about social distancing, um, hand sanitizer, mask, and so forth. So they are beginning to do it. Also, the governor this afternoon on a call stated that he would be enacting another executive order, and that, that he indicated um, that, that it would contain more provisions for businesses and what that meant uh, for those, those essential businesses that are continuing to operate. I have not seen that order yet, um, but we'll be looking at that. Um, as soon as we, we have an opportunity, and I think there are some provisions in there as to how many people can be allowed in the store. Uh, again, I have not seen that provision, but that's just another step that should be coming to help satisfy some of those questions that I'm, I'm getting and probably you are getting from citizens and businesses that, that operate uh, within, within our, our borders. So all the other question that I've gotten and many people have asked me is how many cases do we have in Smithville? And I cannot answer that question. And as the mayor, it concerns me that I cannot answer that question. However, we are continuing to work with the county to get this data because I personally believe, as the mayor of the town of Smithfield, that I need this information, this very valuable information, in my opinion, to make the correct informed decisions for the health and safety of the citizens of Smithfield. So we are continuing to work with the county to try to get this information, but when people ask me, I do not know. I do not have an answer for you. Mayor, can I speak on that topic real quick? Sir, um, obviously uh, that is a concern. It has come up to me as well. And uh, I just want to echo uh, Dr. Pearson in meetings that she's had publicly. Um, she's explained the HIPAA laws where you can't disclose certain information. And she did mention in a session I think it was yesterday that as the cases become more that may be a less restriction on some of their data but I just want to encourage everybody universal precautions in other words treat each other as if you would consider everybody infected not to say grossly but the point is is that keep your distance and it is a great concern but we are the county seat of the, the 
in this town here, and uh, you know, people they work really hard to, to contact the case specifically and make sure that they find out what they call their network or who they've been in touch with. So everybody's been notified from that perspective. And I just think that it's so important that we consider that universal precaution, like Dr. Pearson told us about. So make sure we keep keep doing what we're doing. Right? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And we certainly should. We should act as if everybody has a touch. That's a very, very good point. Um, and we should continue to do that. Um, my personal opinion is, is that giving out the number that are in a certain municipality does not violate HIPAA. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Um, there are also, there is also an exception within the HIPAA law specifically stating that any, any information can be shared. I'm paraphrasing here, okay? Any information be, can be shared if it's for the health and safety of the public. If there's ever been a time, I believe all 100 counties in North Carolina have issued a state of emergency at this time. 90 counties are reporting COVID-19 cases. If there's ever been a time to inform the public, in my opinion, it's now. And all I'm saying is, is that I need that information in an effort to make the right decisions for the citizens. So with that being said, we will continue to work with the citizens of, of Smithfield in order to try to control this nasty virus and we will continue to work with our partners in the county. And let me say, they are doing an outstanding job. Please do not take my comments as being negative from the operation of the county, because the county is doing a fantastic job of, of what they're doing um, in order to try to contain this virus. Uh, they've implemented the, the emergency management system in the, uh, in, the, in the office, and they're doing a fantastic job. Um, so please do not take my comments of needing or wanting additional information as being negative as to what the county is doing. It's just I'm getting those questions as a mayor, and I want the citizens to understand that I can't give them that information, and that, that's my, my point. Again, I want to thank everybody this evening for, for everything, everybody on YouTube. Thank you. Um, to the other council members, hope you, hopefully you haven't fallen asleep yet on the couch. Um, and I want to encourage all our citizens, as Councilman Scott just mentioned, to continue doing what we're doing, to continue practicing the social distancing, continue following the orders that are given out by not only our governor, but, but other agencies, and, and limit your gathering to, to 10 or less, if, if at all possible. And together, we will get through this. And we will come out stronger in the end. So thank you very much. This time, gentlemen, I will turn it over to the town manager for, for his report. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I had a really great report to find with the mayor of the city hall. and then we can recess if you would like to, but I'm not so sure that we have a date that we, we know that we can get back together in this time. So be my recommendation. I was thinking about Councilman Scott about the budget sessions that he mentioned, but I'm not so sure that we, we know at this time when would be a good time to recess to. So be my recommendation that we just adjourn this meeting and then if we decide to begin 
holding budget sessions, should we be able to do so that we just send some dates out when, and make that determination? Okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.